Okay, let's get started. Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. This is just going to be a quick video on something I learned today, and that is how to add a custom landscape into Solarium. So, I have been uh, sitting down earlier today, trying and la yesterday, trying to figure out what my target calendar is going to look like this year. And so I got about 10, 11 targets so far. A couple of more I will add on. And I'm trying to profile them a little bit, know when, you know, uh, project when the best dates are to try and uh, image the target and all that. But it became clear to me that I really want to supplement my imaging time by uh, imaging from uh, my home as well as going to uh, other places. So my backyard was very uh, constrained. Uh, bound by tall redwoods and everything. So I thought, well, what would it look like if I imaged from the front of the house, from the edge of my driveway? And so I went out there, looked around, there's trees there and everything. I said, there's gotta be a way for me to profile uh, what the view of the sky is, where I can import that into Stellarium. And uh, then I can use that to try to evaluate which targets I would be able to see. And so uh, I'm just gonna show you how I did that real quickly. Um, the first thing I did was uh, I did a search on uh, the web using Google and I found this app called Dioptra uh, camera app and so uh, I downloaded it it's free uh, the comments were favorable that I saw there but people weren't sure where the images went once they took these images that I'm gonna share with you and I'll show you where uh, they are located or at least how you can get them on a pixel uh, 6 Pro um, here is kind of a view. I took just one image of the building uh, uh, that I see from the backyard. Key thing is this crosshair here in the center. You have uh, your altitude uh, elevation here. Uh, and over here you're, you try to hold your phone level. And the concept is you really want to put this crosshair right along the top of uh, the obstruction where the sky uh, starts. So uh, let's go uh, back and then, um, all right, and so let's go back and look at some of the images. And uh, so once you take a series of images, I'm gonna just step through them here. Um, what you get is you start near zero. Uh, I'm going to show you a file of azimuth and uh, elevation and degrees that you have to build and you have to put it in a script. But uh, anyway, you, you get your azimuth and you get your degrees here. And so here I am just kind of turning around, taking uh, pictures at different locations. Here's a tree that's an obstruction uh, in my front yard. You kind of see it here on the right hand side. So I want to measure how high that is. So I got to be at least probably 45 degrees. The target would, if it's below 45, probably would be obstructed by the tree. And you just kind of go around. There's across the street, another tall redwood. And so you just kind of take a series of images. Now, this was the first time I just really wanted to see if I could figure out how to import uh, this landscape into Stellarium. I may go back out and refine it but it puts me in the ballpark of where my obstructions are. And so what, uh, after going through these uh, images and recording the azimuth and the uh, elevation, I built a little table like this. Now this is for my backyard. This is not for uh, my front yard driveway area, but basically it, you just jot down. You always make sure you have uh, a, a reading for zero, uh, an azimuth of zero. And then you, these are your elevations in degrees. So um, now let me show you real quickly how to get you, these images uh, where you can view them. Now, um, where did that go? Oh, I know what happened. So, um, okay. So on your phone, this is, uh, where they're going to be. So let's start this uh, from the beginning. All right, and so what you wanna do, at least on my Android, you wanna go into settings, wanna go into storage, 
down to images and then scroll across where your various image folders are and you see one for Dioptra and then what you want to go up to the three dots up here and select all and then uh, the share and I selected that I wanted to upload them to my uh, Google Photos and then uh, they were uploaded so and again uh, that's then here are those images here in uh, in Google Photos so um, all right I took the information I have my little uh, table here that I'm going to use and now the next thing I want to do is I want to find out where Stellarium is so it's in my program files Stellarium I want to go into the uh, landscapes folder uh, and I'm I chose uh, Geneva as the uh, one that I was going to modify now something about uh, you're, you're going to have to go into your properties, into your security panel, and you're probably going to have to change your, uh, your settings. Uh, so for here, for desktop users, I gave them full control because the first time I did it, I couldn't change any of the files. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward Windows stuff there if you're on a Windows platform. So okay, so we go into Geneva and we go down here into this file here is the one uh, that we use as the template and what you see here is uh, basically the layout is azimuth and altitude and so um, I use this this table uh, as, as a template so then I created my own uh, driveway one which is uh, the more important one and then basically here are the values here uh, for azimuth and, uh, and altitude and I saved it gave it uh, the name uh, horizon underscore driveway uh, but then what you have to do is you have to go into this landscape and um, you're making a polygonal uh, horizon list and so you need to put the file name uh, this did say horizon underscore Geneva dot text I just changed it to read uh, my text file uh, actually you know I put in front yard and let's do that right here was it front yard or driveway let's see file and save let me see if that was the uh, Oh no, it was driveway. Okay, let's go back in and just change that to driveway. File save. Close that out. Now we're going to go back into Stellarium. And what you see here is the view of the sky where it read the backyard.txt file to give me the uh, profile for the backyard. So now we're just going to close Stellarium and uh, we're going to reopen it. And then we're just going to advance the time a little bit just for illustration purposes. And we're going to go to the seventh. And we'll make it dark. And then we're going to go into uh, the uh, sky and viewing options window. Uh, we're going to come into the landscape uh, we want Geneva and then the other thing we want to do is we want to highlight or check off draw only polygon and then we're going to make it a line a bit thicker and then what we have here is now you see the view of the sky uh, that I have from the front yard see how we can get it to make it a little darker and then let's put some so this is uh, my view from the uh, front yard and let's close that window there and now the first thing I wanted to know is can I see Polaris because up until now I've been doing my polar alignments using Polaris 
But with a plugin I just loaded in Nina, it's something called Three Point uh, Alignment. So I haven't tried it out yet. I'm, I'm going to get familiar with it. Uh, but I would like to just use Polaris if I can for my driveway so that I can image. So let's just go in here and select Polaris. And what I see uh, for where Polaris is for my driveway, I, I should be able to uh, uh, see it and therefore I can align on it. Now let's bring another target in, uh, M65 uh, is a target I'm interested in just to test out my camera. It's not sized, the Leo uh, triplet, it's not sized uh, large enough really for uh, my telescope, but um, let's see what that looks like because I can illustrate for, uh, further. So I can go through my target list and I can bring each target in for the appropriate time of the year or when they're going to be in the sky in, in my area. And then uh, what I can do here is I can kind of step through the night. Uh, there's different ways to do this, but uh, here we are at 1030 and I can just step through the night and see how it moves through the sky. Oh, you know, I can't pass, you know. Looks like I got to stop around 2.30 in the morning. So I can um, profile the number of available imaging hours where the target is above a certain altitude. And for me, that's generally 35 degrees uh, minimum altitude. Um, so uh, I've kind of solved the problem for myself. Uh, pretty easy to do to put if you have a similar problem where you're uh, tree bound or building bound or something. Uh, here's a quickly way, uh, quick way using Diopra, Dioptra on a uh, Android phone anyway uh, to kind of do a profile to see what the actual uh, usable uh, view of the sky you have for imaging. So, all right, I think I covered everything. And um, other than that, uh, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, as always, thank you for uh, dropping into the channel. Oh, I did order a Optolong L Enhance uh, 1.25 inch uh, filter. I have an empty spot in my filter wheel and that'll be what I will use at times with the uh, new ASI 533MC Pro. Uh, other times uh, I'll, I'll use the luminous filter I already have in my filter wheel with the 533 uh, I guess to cut out the IR and, uh, and UV so just an update on that okay well thanks again for dropping into the channel if you have any questions or comments please uh, leave them below if there's an easier way to do this uh, I also uh, put the landscape into Carts du Seal but this year I really want to use Stellarium more and uh, Carts du Seal less so alright that's about it. See you next time.